very timely event and the opportunity to bring solidarity from my uni and the PCS. It's a word that gets banded around quite a lot, but it actually it does have very practical meaning. I would argue it is our most powerful weapon against those that would seek to divide us. The right-wing governments in the White House and in the UK today uh, who would attempt to make workers pay for an economic crisis that we didn't cause. It is our most powerful weapon against those corporate interests that are the cause of both the economic and environmental uh, crisis. Now this election which has been referred to I would say is more to do with a cynical attempt by the Tories to disguise their real intentions to use Brexit to uh, remove uh, and attack workers' rights, already the most repressive and restrictive in the Western world, to use it to continue their attack on the NHS and public services and to continue to remove the environmental protections that we know are absolutely essential if we're going to combat uh, climate change. Not forgetting, I would add, a cynic. Yeah, sorry if uh, oh, that's a bit l louder. Not forgetting, of course, what I would argue is a very cynical attempt to prevent the criminal prosecution of 30 Tory MPs who should be facing the courts as a result of election spending abuses. Now, this election, whatever the outcome after June the 8th, is an opportunity for us to challenge the Tories, to put an alternative, to make the argument that climate is a trade union issue. There are many struggles in history of unions involved around issues of public health and environmental degradation. That it's an extension of the union's role around health and safety in the workplace. The experience of the firefighters around extreme weather conditions and flooding and an attempt to defend a vital public service is one concrete example of where climate and trade union activity connect. Not forgetting the work of the unions, the health unions in New York State in the aft aftermath of Hurricane uh, uh, Sandy. Now PCS has been involved in a number of initiatives. I want to highlight what I think was an idea before its time. Last year we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the Lucas Plan, which was drawn up by shop stewards in what is now aerospace in the arms industry that set out a detailed plan of diversification from arms manufacture into socially useful production. The Climate Jobs Initiative built on those same principles and that is a document I was very proud to see footage of the protests taking place outside Blackpool against fracking and a number of the protesters holding up the Climate Jobs pamphlet which sets out how we can create a million skilled, unionised, decent jobs and cut CO2 emissions by 80% over the course of the next 20 years by investing in insulation of public homes and public buildings, of investing in an integrated green publicly owned transport system and investing in renewables in wind and wave and solar. These are very inspiring and practical examples described by Naomi Klein as a fantastic tool for climate uh, justice. My union believes, that, and we have to challenge, the false choice between jobs and climate. And if ever there was an example of that false choice, I would cite what's going on by the attempt of Quadrilla and various other companies to rip up the countryside in the quaintly named Little Plumpton and Roseacre areas on the outskirts of Blackpool. Instead of fracking, we could invest, utilise the file coast rich in natural resources of wind and wave technologies and in a town that is defined by the Financial Times as Blackpool as, one, as the fifth most deprived town in the UK, the alternative, the means of providing much needed employment is not the spurious job claims of the fracking industry, but investing in wind and wave technology on the file coast and in Lancashire. The, the Bakers Union, alongside my own and a number of environmental frac, uh, campaigners against fracking, uh, are organising a meeting in Blackpool on the 13th of May that, are, that link together the themes of £10 an hour 
for workers exploited in the hospitality and retail and service sector of that town and looking to build on the experience of unions reaching out to the super exploited workers, the young, the women and migrant workers that are exploited in the British economy today but most importantly linking up those struggles with setting out an alternative of public investment of wind and wave technology. And my union is going to continue the fight within the trade union movement. I urge everybody, if you're not a member of a union, join a union. If you are a member of a union, take the issue of climate into your branch and into your trade union. Support those of us that are trying to put an alternative to expose the myth that high energy prices are down to the electrification of heat or subsidies to renewables. High energy prices are down to energy giants in a rigged energy market it, making obscene profits at the public expense. We, we also have to expose the line that we should operate as trade unions in a balanced energy policy. That Doesn't that sound nice? That is a code for the status quo. That is a code for continuing to pump out green em greenhouse emissions at their current level arguably at an even higher level, bringing us closer to the three to four degrees increase in global temperatures that we know, based on science, are potentially catastrophic for humanity and the planet that we live on. And that there is a false choice between defending jobs, whether it's in the civil service, the NHS or local government, defending jobs in the Grangemouth refinery, defending jobs on the rigs, defending jobs in the gas and oil industries, it is a false choice between unions fighting to conduct a militant defence of their members' interests and using union power and the knowledge of the workers in those sectors to combine with those of us that want to go beyond the immediate bargaining agenda and use union power to put workers at the heart of a just transition and to link the trade union movement with the environmental movement in challenging the economic power that has dominated the world for far too long. And I'll finish with this. There's a very fascinating statistic that came out a couple of uh, two years ago. That a mere, since the dawn of the industrial age, since 1751, it's estimated that a mere 90 companies in world history are responsible for two thirds of global emissions. What that tells us is that we continue our campaigning and, and direct action. We continue to take the, the case into communities, into unions. But to recognize this struggle is a struggle against an economic system that places the profits of the multinationals and financiers who dominate this world above social need and the needs of this planet, planet and humanity itself. The struggle goes on up to June the 8th and beyond. Thanks very much for listening.